Hey guys, it's Tekker in here. In today's video, I want to go over the best deals for AM4 CPUs. That's right. If you guys did not know, I was recently having a conversation with a viewer about AMD CPUs, and they were looking to upgrade one of their CPUs on the AM4 platform. Now, keep in mind, AM4 is technically dead platform, but the cool thing about AM4 still being around is that AMD says they'll continue to support it even after that. You might not get any new CPU releases, however, you will get driver supports for those CPUs, which is fantastic. And the cool thing about them is, is that since AM5 has come down, there's a ton of CPUs still in stock for AM4, meaning the price for them has gradually gone down over time. It's actually kind of ridiculous because you can buy like one of the nice high end eight core CPUs for around $200, even though when it was first released, it was like 450. Yeah, I looked around to find the best deals for you guys because I was planning to upgrade my AM4 CPU from the 30, uh, was it 3900X 12 core 24 thread CPU to the Ryzen 5950X, which is a 16 core 32 thread. Now you might be wondering, isn't that gonna be expensive? Well, the cool thing about it is that CPU when it first came out was an $800 CPU. The cool thing is though, it is still really good. And sometimes even outperforms the AM5 CPUs. It's only 350 instead of $800. It's ridiculous how much the AM4 CPUs dropped. And another additional thing about the actual price drop for the CPUs is actually the platform itself. Now, of course, AM4 or just the motherboards support DDR4. Now, a lot of people want to build on AM5. However, the actual RAM for DDR5 is actually expensive. Like since there's not a whole lot of it made, the prices go up because of that exact reason. And the performance from it is really good at times to being not really that noticeable compared to the DDR4. It depends on like the frequency of the actual build. But the good thing about that meaning is that there's a ton of extra DDR4 RAM on the actual market, making 16 gigabytes, the 32 gigabytes, to even 128 gigabytes very cheap in comparison to the newer RAM that actually came out. So there's a lot of benefits to actually building on AM4. The only real con to building on AM4 compared to AM5 is actually the real not being the latest and greatest but if you can compromise that fact you can just build am4 start on out build something nice then transition later just by switching out the motherboard and your pc build and the cooler and your cpu and at that point you can just put the new the components you already have for your gpu ssd and all that other stuff in the build and you'll be set so that's an interesting thing to keep in mind, but at that point, it's the same thing. It's just building on AM5. Why don't you just start at that? It depends if you're on a budget or not. And I feel like the AM4 builds are much more targeted to budget gamers. I feel like that's the nice thing about them. So let's get right into the best deals. So the first deal we got for AM4 is actually one of the nicer AM4 CPUs for just purely gaming on single core performance, which is the Ryzen 7 57X 3D, eight core, 16 thread CPU, with a uh, speed of 300 gigahertz. But the big thing with this CPU is that it's just great for gaming overall. Like all the eight core CPUs with the X3Ds are amazing. Now there is another CPU like this, it's counterpart, which is the uh, 58X3D, which is an eight core 16 That's like the newer version of itself for AM4. However, the only problem with that CPU is that even though it performs better than it, it's still very expensive. You can actually see right here why. So look at this, this CPU was released at, what is it, 450, right? And of course, it's now 419, which is like 60% off. But if you're gonna get a really nice eight core CPU that performs really good on a dead platform that still has driver support, I would not recommend spending like this much on an eight core CPU because like you can look at this, get the same actual results for gaming without having to spend double the price on the CPU on a dead socket. Now, I wanna go over one important fact about uh, building on AM4 now. I do think if you don't have a PC already, building on AM5 is better. Unless you strictly do want to build on a budget, then AM4 does make some sense. But just go with the newer platform if you don't have a PC already. However, if you do have an existing AM4 build, there actually is no reason not to upgrade your CPU. If you can just spend like $200 or $300 on like a super insanely powerful CPU for that platform. That's at least how I see things. Now we got our next CPU here, which is the Ryzen 9 5950X. This is a 16 core 32 thread CPU with a base clock of like, was it 4.9 gigahertz? It can't get over five gigahertz, but this thing is an absolute beast. If you're just doing like multitasking, video editing, workloads, it doesn't have the greatest single core performance. So it isn't the most insane thing for gaming. Like you can game on it, don't get me wrong, but if you're going to go gaming, the 57 X3D is significantly better. Plus also you save like around $150 instead of spending like 350 on this. But if you are someone who does a like primarily work and do a lot of those kind of applications like I do for like YouTube, 
then this is an amazing CPU for its actual price point. Now, if you're not looking for the top of the line of AM4, you can actually get the second best thing for actually work, which is the 59X. This is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. This is very good for multitasking, streaming, gaming, all that jazz. Like it doesn't have the best single core performance like the other one we talked about earlier, but if you do need it for work, which with that viewer I was talking about earlier, he was planning to get this just because of the fact that it was at well, five hundred and seventy dollars is now half that price, only at two hundred and thirty-three dollars, and he's already on AM4. So why not just upgrade the next best thing? You know what I'm saying? And man, this CPU is such a good deal. Oh my God, you can get the motherboard combos too for cheap. Wow, I did not notice that one. Okay, that's actually ridiculous. So you can literally just spend another fifty dollars and get like one hundred fifty dollars and get the motherboard too if you really want to. If it's not out of stock next up we got a six core cpu if you're looking just to pure the game you don't want to spend a whole lot of money and you don't need the most insane performance of am4 well you can actually get the 56 x for actually 128 dollars which is awesome or you can get the normal variation of it but it's weird how the normal variation of the cpu the one without the x is actually four dollars more expensive even though like this one's better just clock speeds are better all together and it's only 124 dollars instead of 128 so yeah, this is a very good CPU if you don't plan to do too much on it, but just purely game plus some side workloads, like maybe like some Excel files, maybe some typing up some stuff. Like if you just plan a game here and there, this is the CPU I would recommend. Now, if you want to save some money, you can actually go with a cheaper version for a six core CPU, which is the Ryzen 5 5500 six core 12 thread CPU. Now, this is going to be the same thing with the other CPU, which is going to be good for gaming, uh, but it might not have the most insane performance out there, but you can get it on a budget for $76. So it's actually not a bad deal, especially since this is similar to its other counterpart, the 45G or just the 45, I guess it would be better because the 45G is like, uh, what is it? A hundred dollars, even though it's not really worth the performance for the price, you can actually get the 45, even though it's slightly lower clocks, it doesn't have integrated graphics. You can actually use the CPU just the game and it actually is pretty good. I actually have uh, this CPU, the G version for gaming, it performs so well and i assume this one's going to perform similar results just maybe slightly lower just because it doesn't have uh the higher clock speeds and a lot of jazz now i do want to go over some other interesting things like of course with the 5000 series cpu there are going to be significantly cheaper than the 3000 series cpus which is interesting that uh, the 3000 series cpus even though they're an older cpu model and there's still a good amount of them on the market <laughs> they aren't actually significantly cheaper than the 5000 series cpus and my i think like i have an idea on why that might be the case i think it's because the 3000 series lineup when they first came out was actually outperforming intel's cpus so most people People actually bought into them and no one saw the reason to actually buy the 5000 cpus because they had the 3000 series cpus if you hit the top of the line so i feel like as a byproduct of that actual situation that's why ryzen 5000 has gone significantly uh, cheaper but that's just based on my business sense of things let me know if you guys think uh, similar results in the comments down below now, I do want to go over some honorable mention CPUs that are pretty good deals. Well, first off, we got the Ryzen 5 3600 CPU, which is a $90 CPU. Comes with a cooler, all that jazz. It performs really good for uh, single core performance. And this was one of the CPUs I was going to mention, but the thing with it is, it's really good, right? But you can, of course, get the 55 for the 5000 series for actually cheaper for like $10 and stuff. Uh, and then the other CPU I do want to mention is the ryzen 3 4100 is a four core eight core cpu uh it's not particularly the best you can use it for gaming but i wouldn't recommend the cpu this is more for those workloads that are not really for gaming you can't use it for gaming like it says here but you're mostly going to be using it for excel some side stuff you do for work and that's particularly about it if you pair it with a decent gpu you can't get really good gaming performance with it though and the last cpu i want to mention as an honorable mention for good deals is actually the ryzen 7 5700g now if you guys do not know what g means in any cpu lineup for ryzen it means it has integrated graphics so if you don't have a gpu you can't actually use it i know some of the most recent like 5000 series cpus can be used the game they're pretty good not the most insane thing in the world though i wouldn't recommend giving on integrated graphics they have gotten better significantly but at the end of the day just get a gpu and you'll be chilling for the time being now everything i mentioned in this video will be linked down below so if you do use those links they do support the channel no additional cost to you guys I really do appreciate it if you use those links. But those are the best deals for AM4 currently on the market. Now, I got a quick question for you guys. If you're given the option to upgrade your PC to the highest specs possible for two to $300, would you do it? Let me know in the comments down below. Me personally, 
I would definitely do it because that means I could get another two to three years out of my PC components, which is fantastic. That means another two or three years of actually saving to a higher end PC build down the line, which is We'd love to see it. I do have one tip of advice for people out there. If you are building a new PC, I do recommend building on AM5. Even though it's gonna be a little more costly, it will perform better in the long run because you won't get instead of like another three to two years, like on our end, you might actually gain another four to five years because of the platform. The platform is newer, meaning they're gonna support longer and you get a lot more new CPUs to come out compared to AM4 where it's not gonna really get any new CPUs. They'll still get driver supports, but that's gonna be practically about it. If you guys did find this video helpful or found any good deals, then make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed to us on future tech content.